Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the second in a series of video tutorials on how to learn to code for Unity 5. So this episode we're going to be looking at some simple variables and by the end of it we'll be able to lead ourselves on to the next tutorial where we turn into more advanced variables. So firstly, let's create ourselves a brand new C Sharp script. So right click, create and C Sharp script. I'm going to call this variable example. And I'm going to hit enter to open up in MonoDevelop or for you guys if you have it, it be Visual Studio. So a variable is like kind of a pocket, if you will, in the script where anything can be stored for reference later on. So you can have, say, a number, whether it be a whole number or a decimal. You can have a game object. You can have uh, an audio source. Uh, you can have tons of different things. Um, variables are very, very important in scripting, as virtually any script you write will probably need a variable to some extent. Um, so in this script, we're going to let's start with um, an integer. So firstly, before we go any further, just remember that when creating a new script, all these need to remain here. Uh, we can get rid of these double slashes and let's get rid of the void update. We won't use it, we'll just use the void start. So underneath your public class variable example mono behavior, let's write our first variable, as I say, an integer. So let's put public and then int which is short for integer. So if you're using a whole number and only a whole number, you should be using int, integer. Let's call this um, integer example. And then let's make that equal to five and then a semicolon. So this line is now saying we have a public variable, um, which is an integer and it is called integer example, and it is equal to five. So the public, a way of, an easy way of explaining why public is there, it just means that um, this variable can only be accessed within this script we are writing, whether it's in this section here, void start, or whether we want to have void update or anything else below, we can still reference this particular variable at any point in this script. To reference it outside of the script, is something called static, and we'll go through that in the next tutorial. So next uh, variable, let's have um, public, and let's have a float. Now a float is a decimal number. So if you have a number which may not necessarily be whole, but may sometimes be whole, you should be using a float. So let's call this decimal example. And let's make it equal to 1.234. But before we finish the line, we need to put F at the end. So any number you have must contain F at the end there. That just helps it define that it is a float, a decimal number. So we can finish the line with a semicolon. So let's state one more variable. Let's move away from numbers for now and let's... Um, Let's reference something within our game itself. So again, public, and we want game object, and we'll just call this object example. And we don't need to make it equal to anything specific right now. So I'm just going to put a semicolon to end that there. So here in this script, we now have three variables. Three pockets for the script to contain three different values or objects. So let's save that. Let's head back into Unity. Give it a second to think and read the script down here. So now we have this little um, script here. So I'm going to head over to the sphere that we first added and I'm going to remove this script that we already have attached which is example 01 which we wrote last time in our basics tutorial. So right click and remove component and now let's drag this variable example onto the sphere. 
And down here, you'll notice that we now have the integer example um, and the decimal example. And we now have object example. So this is now a case of where we can drag and drop an object from the scene or from the hierarchy onto our object example. So let's take the sphere and drag and drop there. So although it's not exactly specified here in our uh, variable, it is actually specified in the game itself down here. So ultimately what this means is that from our example script, we had game object .set active as false. Now theoretically, we could put down here in our void start that object example.set active false. And let's save that. So to prove this point now, what I'm going to do is on the cube, let's add a little thing down here. I'm going to remove the example 02 script, which was the JavaScript we wrote last time. So now it's just the basic cube. And on the sphere, rather than have that sphere there, I'm going to drag and drop the cube on there. So although this script is on the sphere, the cube will now set itself as inactive because of our variable that we have set. So let's press play. And we should hopefully see that the cube has now disappeared and the sphere remains, even though the script is on the sphere. So you can modify these numbers here too, the integer example and the decimal example. Let's put this as 10, but that will not affect the statement here where we first put our variable. It will always remain as five. But when you save here, it will always remain at 10. It's worth noting that little fact. Okay, so next thing we'll do is we will take what we've written here and we'll convert it to JavaScript. Converting between the two um, file, uh, sorry, between the two languages is, is vital in Unity. Yes, I know it can handle both uh, languages, but it's always good to know how to convert the two. So let's right click, create JavaScript, and let's call this variable example two. So let's double click and head into this. It should open in Mono develop. It's just taking a second there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the function update and the hashtag pragma strict at the top. We do not need that. So if you remember from our example 02, there is a lot less lines in JavaScript than what there is in C sharp. It's not necessarily the case when you have variables and take them into account. So we want to take this first variable and convert that into JavaScript. So that's really easy to do. So let's do var, because we're stating variable, rather than public. By default, it already is public, so it can only be used within this script. So let's put var, and let's have integer example. And then you need to put a colon many spaces there so you need a colon and then it's still int it's still referenced the same still an integer and then we can still put equals five and semicolon so in a way it kind of is the same just two things are back to front so instead of var uh, sorry instead of public you would have var short for variable and instead of doing int, uh, int and then the name you do the name and then the int so next one, var, and this was decimal example, and that is type float. And let's make that equal to 1.234. With this one, we do not need to put the F after. JavaScript automatically realizes that, oh, it's a float. It's a decimal. I don't need this extra um, thing at the end. 
so we just put a semicolon. And let's also do that game object. So var and it's object example and then colon and then it is game object and then semicolon. So converting the statement of them three variables is almost the same. So instead of public, it's var, and then you just switch the two around. So you do the type first in C sharp, and then name, whereas in JavaScript you do name and then type second. So function start, we have here object example dot set active false. Well, we've already converted that into uh, JavaScript itself. So we know that this line is exactly the same in JavaScript. So object example dot set active false and semicolon and save. Let's head back to Unity and it's thinking about the script. So let's head to that sphere and we'll remove the C sharp script that we wrote by removing component and we'll attach the JavaScript version onto the sphere and you'll notice it appears exactly the same and the principle works exactly the same as well. Drag and drop your cube onto the object example, press play and then you'll see that the cube disappears and once again with the numbers here you can change this number to let's say 15 but it will remain as five as we originally stated in uh, the variable declaration. So that is the simplicity of variables. You just have to remember with them uh, the order in which you declare them, whether you're using JavaScript or C sharp. Converting between the two is very easy once you get used to it. As you've seen in me do in this tutorial, taking the C sharp versions and putting them in JavaScript the same works the other way. If you want to take the JavaScript and convert it to C sharp, it works out the same way. So we'll leave this tutorial there for now. Uh, next time we'll go into a bit more advanced variables before we carry on with multiple other things within scripting. Next time what I want to get into are static variables. Uh, I won't explain too much now, but a static variable it is you can pull um, variables from other scripts rather than just itself by using a static. But we'll go into that in detail next time. So until then, practice yourself um, with these particular variables uh, and just brush up on your skills. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.